together very closely. Uh, I'm honored to be with you today to discuss the unprecedented actions my administration is taking to support our treasured Native American communities. Together, we're fighting for everybody, but we're fighting this horrible uh, coronavirus. It's a tough opponent, but we're winning, and we're uh, starting to see our country come back. It's been a very exciting few days. We're starting to see it all come back. We're improving the lives of Native American families and tribes more than any administration has ever done by far. We're grateful to be joined by Governor Doug Ducey, and thank you very much, Doug, for being with thank us. Thank you, Mr. President. Secretary Eugene Scalia, thank you, Eugene. Pleasure. Senator Martha McSally, who's doing very well. I hear things are very good. You're doing great. Thank you, Martha. Vice President of Navajo, Navajo Nation, Myron Lizer. And, and by the way, uh, we appreciate it very much. And you know, there's two ways of saying that name. They told me outside, but I always think of it as Lizer. So how do you like it? How do you like it? That's what I thought. Okay. Thanks, Myron, very much. And second lady, thank you very much for being here. We really, we really appreciate it. The uh, Navajo Nation has been very special to a lot of people, and it's certainly been very special to this state. And uh, the relationship, Doug, I think is extraordinary, isn't it, it's when you get right down to it? So thank you very much, and we very much appreciate it. Uh, Native Americans have been hit hard by the terrible pandemic. Over 2,000 members of the Navajo Nation have tested positive for the coronavirus, and tragically, more than 70 have lost their lives. How is it looking right now? How is it doing? Well, uh, the numbers are still rising. We're hoping that it flattens. Uh, our health professionals have said that uh, the peak will be in mid-May, and uh, it's kind of uncanny, and it's fallen that, that way. So uh, 2,400 infected with 73 that have succumbed, and uh, that's too many. That's a lot. Uh, Mitigation-wise, you're doing what? Uh, we have shut down the, uh, enacted a 57-hour curfew over the weekend. Our people love to travel out to the border towns off the reservation. Uh, recently, um, the uh, National Guard came in and shut down Gallup under a new mayor leadership in Gallup, New Mexico. So they've been on lockdown for five, six days now. And so that's helped. But our people are readily going to other border towns like Flagstaff and Farmington, New Mexico. So uh, I think the supermajority are obeying and staying home. But what we're doing, you know, we're bringing these two. These are very hard to come by because they're very popular. This is done by Abbott Laboratories. And we're bringing them for you. And these are the quick tests, and they're very accurate and uh, very fast. Yes. So uh, we're doing that. I think we have 1,000 uh, cartridges, too, 1,000 for 1,000 tests. So hopefully that'll be, uh, that'll be helpful to you. Yes. Okay? We Every appreciate little bit it. helps because you've done a fantastic job. You've been great friends. Native Americans have been hit hard by this terrible pandemic. Over 2,000 members of the Navajo Nation have uh, really, I mean, it's been incredible what's taken place, and there's nothing we can say. But the uh, coronavirus is tragically, uh, as you just said, 70 people lost their lives. The administration is deploying the full resources of the federal government to support and protect our Native American communities in this very grave time of need. And I know that uh, I think I can speak very strongly for Martha and for the governor. Uh, we're full hands on deck, and you're working very hard. I know that, Doug, work very, very hard. Uh, and even uh, Department of Labor, it's, uh, it's, been, it's been working very hard with everybody that's in this room and everybody that's that needs to be, right? A anything you have to say, by the way, Gene, while you're here, please? It, it's a pleasure to be here. It's wonderful being on the road again, as you know, Mr. President. And then great being in Arizona, which is such a spectacular state, and uh, the Native American communities here are such a great part of the state and, and really our, our nation and our nation's heritage. So it's so good to be here. Um, I know, Mr. President, you have important announcements to make today about additional things we're doing to help uh, these uh, tribal uh, governments. And uh, we're certainly doing all we can at the Labor Department to implement uh, the legislation that you signed. You got enacted so incredibly quickly. People forget, three weeks in March, three major pieces of legislation with paid leave, with uh, unemployment benefits, and with the Paycheck Protection Program to put us in position to get going again. And, and now, uh, Governor Ducey and I were just talking about it. 
we're reopening, and it's, it's a wonderful thing to see. I think we're well positioned, and I think, Mr. President, with your leadership, uh, we're going we're to get back to where we were just a few weeks ago. Things were going so well, and, uh, and we'll get there. I, we had a nice conversation, the Governor, Vice President, Second Lady, and I, a little while ago, talking about some of the things we're doing at the Department. I mentioned these dislocated worker grants that are made available also to tribal governments. So I urge you to look into that and see if we can help you with that. And I'd too. like to introduce also the Governor, uh, Stephen Lewis, who's has been terrific and working with us very hard. Thank you very much, Stephen. It's fantastic. We appreciate it very much. How is it going? Well, it's, it's you know, going uh, to a point where we're trying to keep above beyond the curve as well. Uh, we're located just not far from here, uh, our, our traditional lands and our, our, our reservation land base. That's Hilu, and Hilu River. Hilu River, Hilu River, River. River. home to uh, one, of the, one of the flag raisers uh, of, on uh, Mount Sarabachi, Ira Hayes. Right. And, uh, That's you know, beautiful we, territory, isn't it? It is. It is. Thank you. Thank you, President. But it's, uh, how, are you, how are you doing in terms of uh, uh, the amount? What are your numbers now, as of today? What are your numbers? Our, our numbers, uh, we're, we've, we've tested uh, over 1,000. We've had uh, about uh, just over uh, 1,100 tests. We've had one fatality. Uh, we have uh, 44 positive tests. Uh, our uh, tribal community is, is around 23,000 members. Uh, so uh, we are uh, keeping ahead of the curve, uh, uh, but uh, I know testing is a big issue. And uh, also, thank you for working with your administration on getting one of the Abbott analyzers right. as well. We were one of the first tribes to get one as well. And then also working with Governor Ducey, uh, getting uh, five ventilators as well. That's right. Um, we, we run our own health care, independent of the Indian Health Service, uh, Gila River Health Care. That's great. And so we hire our own uh, doctors. We put our own communities uh, members to work and from other tribes as well. Mm -hmm. And so we're taking care of our, our own uh, tribal members on this. We, we have uh, really, we, we have a, an incident command that we started as well. All of our departments are collaborating. Uh, for one purpose, and that's to keep our, our community members safe, Mr. President. That's fantastic. Good. And you'll have the ventilators there soon, I know, right? Yes. Knowing Doug, they're good ventilators, too, aren't they? Yes. Right? They're really good. Weeks ago, I signed the CARES Act, which includes $8 billion to help tribal governments. And I want to thank Senator McSally for fighting hard to get those uh, funds and get them here and get them to a lot of different people all over the country, including to the folks in this room. So I want to thank you, Martha. You've done a fantastic job. You really have. This is the single largest investment in Indian country in our history. So the amount of money that's being uh, sent to Indian country, as we call it, is the largest amount in the history of the U.S. And you deserve it. And you've been through a lot. The Navajo Nation will soon receive over $600 million. That's a lot. Should I renegotiate that? Can we renegotiate that? Uh, so. Only if we go up. Uh, <laughs> he said only if you go up. I understand. <laughs> I've heard that before. The Lihu uh, River will receive, uh, and, and I think you probably know all about this, but we're giving you some information, $40 million. And you're going to use that very well. I know that because I know you. Uh, you're going to be given $40 million in initial funds to help protect their citizens from the scourge from the plague from what we're all fighting in this country should have never happened should have been contained from where it came since i took office my administration has also worked to repatriate precious native american artifacts to protect children in the care of the indian health and indian health service and to make eagle remains more easily accessible for cultural and religious purposes and to highlight the contributions of Native American veterans throughout the history of our nation, so you know all those elements. Uh, and the Eagle Remains is a very important thing to you, right? Oh, well, yes, sir. Very important. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Last year, I signed the first presidential proclamation recognizing the tragedy of missing and murdered American Indians and Alaska Natives. Mm -hmm. We also launched Operation Lady Justice and provided $273 million to improve public safety in Native American tribal communities. At the end of this event, I will once again sign a proclamation recognizing missing and murdered American Indians and Alaska Native Awareness Day. 
It's been a tremendous problem, missing and murdered American Indians. It's been a tr Could you discuss that for a second, please? Um, I don't want to steal a second lady's thunder here. Um, she's Good, I'd been, like to have the second lady. Go yeah, ahead, please. Uh, well, we're, we, Navajo Nation has been really hit hard by missing and murdered indigenous women. Right. Um, you know, it seems to be a growing, um, a growing um, issue that's been happening with Navajo. And so we, uh, you know, with the Ashland Mike case that came up in 2016 where she was kidnapped and raped and murdered in Shiprock, New Mexico, May 2nd, 2016. So that's kind of what opened the door for Navajo to start saying, okay, we need to do something because that became the forefront. And so since then, the Amber Alert on Navajo Nation has gotten better, but still needs help with funding, still needs help with um, getting the, the data together. Um, our first lady, Fafilia Nez, is also um, part of the New Mexico task force that's getting together data. And uh, so we're just really needing help in that in that sense. And so we don't want to lose any more of our, our native sisters, our native mothers. And so the cry is, is, you know, to get the awareness out because a lot of people don't know of the missing and murdered indigenous women and girls. And now it's hitting the LGTPQ <clears throat> Um, community and so we just want to make that aware and know that hey you know we're we're waving our arms here you know I think there was a movie that came out with uh, Native women that have been uh, yeah, uh, murdered right. and, and missing and so it hit it hits close to home because we have a, a close family member Patricia Potero that went missing in 2015 they found her two months later murdered in Albuquerque New Mexico and so her case still remains unsolved we got Tamika Platero, who's from Little, Little Water, uh, New Mexico, who went missing November 25th, 2019, and is still missing. And, uh, and so we have these girls out there that are missing, and we don't know. And, you know, there's so that this jurisdiction. this has been far disproportionate to uh, other people in other uh, areas of the country, what, you, what you've gone through. I mean, I've been hearing about this for a long time. Yes. For years and years. Uh, this has been for many years, for many yes. decades, yes. Yes. disproportionate. Yes. Well, Two hundred seventy-three million dollars. A lot of that's going to go toward trying to solve that problem. It's a problem that can be solved. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. President. Thank but, you, Mr. Uh, President. I know you're going to use it well. Yes. And you'll figure it out, right? Yes. It's yes. a horrible. It's a horrible thing. So New Mexico versus Arizona. What? Uh, tell me, because we're here. Uh, where where are you going to be? Uh, where where's the problem worse, New Mexico or well, Arizona? Navajo Nation spans Utah, New Mexico, right. and Arizona, and so you know I think all of us working collaboratively that's going to really help. You know because sometimes we get misclassified. We get misclassified as Hispanic, and so I think there was a, a Hopi um, girl that had um, been murdered here in Phoenix, and they classified her as Hispanic. And so, so a lot of times, you know, the people don't know. So I think with the more um, talks out there that people will, be, you know, start is to understand. Is there a understand. certain area, though, or you have the four states, is there a certain area where the problem is exacerbated or worse, or is it Well, it's, I think it's just all Indian country, you know, Indian, Indian country, country, whether it's Alaska Native or Navajo or Hopi or Gila River, you know, it's, it's yeah. all over. It's a very big problem in Alaska. Yeah, Mr. Yes. President, if I uh, could uh, add to that, uh, just recently in Farmington, New Mexico, there was an Anglo woman who was abducted, and uh, I'm most certain she came across the Navajo Nation and was uh, found murdered in uh, Flag near Flagstaff, Arizona. And so I think it just speaks largely to the lack of public safety officers in such a vast land the size of West Virginia. It, it is a vast, yeah, it's yes. a vast land. So uh, not only Navajo and others, but it's just the area that I guess because there's uh, not as many public safety that uh, you, you get those well, kinds I'm of... I'm going to be signing something in a couple of moments, and I hope it helps a lot, not just a little yes. bit, a lot. Yes. And I think you'll do a fantastic job. I know you're going to be watching it personally. Yes. And uh, between the three of you and everyone else that I know so well, I think you're going to do a great job. And so go get them. Thank you, Mr. Go President. Go do the job. I'd like to maybe finish off with uh, the governor. Great governor. You're doing a... Phenomenal job. Uh, what do you have to say, Doug? Well, my, 
my mic thankfully is working. First, I want to say thank you, Mr. President. We're, uh, we're thrilled that you're back in Arizona, especially to talk these specific tribal issues. Uh, I want to say to Second Lady Lizer, to uh, Vice President Lizer, to, to Governor Lewis, uh, this focus that we've had on our tribal nations, first and foremost, <laughs> around the coronavirus. Uh, with a special shout out to Senator McSally, who advocated for these ventilators that were so needed on Navajo Nation. Please extend my, my best to, to President Nez. And uh, I'm, I'm so grateful, Mr. President, that you took a personal interest in getting these ventilators to Navajo Nation. And I'm, uh, I'm proud, Mr. Secretary, in Arizona, our, our legislature, <laughs> both Democrat and Republican, last year signed HB 2570. And Second Lady Lizer, I want to give a, a personal thank you to you. Uh, this was the bill to address missing and murdered indigenous people. And what we hope to do in Arizona is to reduce and eliminate this scourge that we have on our native nations. And uh, in, in Arizona, we have 22 tribal nations and 75% of the Navajo people reside in the state of Arizona. So that was a positive thing that we could get done last year. And Governor Lewis, I want to say to you, another positive thing in addition to the HB 2570 that we passed, it was also unanimous, was the drought contingency plan to address Arizona's water future. You were a real leader on that, and for that I'm grateful. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being here to, well, thank to you celebrate these accomplishments, Mr. And you know, President. one of the other accomplishments we have is uh, uh, in Arizona and a lot of other states where building a wall, and you're finally getting what you need. And interestingly, California is calling because in a uh, bordering towns, as you know, in Mexico, they have a very big outbreak of the coronavirus. And California is calling, saying, uh, you got to help us. Uh, those are not calls that the media knows about, but that's the facts. And in Tijuana, right along the border, they have a tremendous outbreak. And uh, we have just completed a uh, 172 miles of wall. And it's real wall, not the kind you were having built over the years that were sort of scoffed at, right? And we've done a lot in Arizona, and the people are letting us know they're so happy. They're so thrilled about it. Uh, it uh, it's made a tremendous difference. And we've had one of the best months ever in the history of our country for uh, not having people come in that we don't want, that we don't want in our country. Mm -hmm. We want to have the people that, that uh, come in the right way. So uh, you see the numbers. The numbers are about the best we've ever had in the history of the country. So, so it's good. But we're getting that done. I guess you see. Do you see where they're doing it? Yes. Yeah, it's been a big. Uh, it's a big thing. 100. We're up to 172 miles. Uh, we'll have it uh, completed early next year. So it's been. It's been something. Okay. I'm going to sign this. I want to just congratulate you, Myron. Yes, sir. Thank you. I want to congratulate you, Second Lady. That's so fantastic. Thank you. And I want to congratulate you. For also, because I've I've been in that vicinity, and it's one of the most beautiful places you can imagine. So congratulations very much. Thank you, Stephen. One second, please. One second, Jim. Yes, sir. Okay. I want to make sure they everybody looks good, except me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to hand this to I'm going to hand this to the second lady. Okay. Yeah. Don't mind. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I, I want to thank yeah, you. Go ahead, please. I, I, I want to thank you again. I, I'm Steven, wearing. Go ahead. I'm, I'm wearing my my red uh, ribbon in in. Uh, re remembrance of this significant moment for missing and murdered Native Americans. And again, I want to thank you uh, for making such a, a, an announcement today and for, for signing uh, an important document to commemorate the, the National Day of Awareness. And, and, uh, and I know that your administration also made another very important announcement today regarding the Coronavirus Relief Fund. And, and uh, thank you for that and to, to take a few moments to, to comment about that as well. Uh, I want to thank, of course, Governor Ducey and, and Senator McSally for advocating uh, and for making sure that this uh, is getting out to, to, the, to Indian country, uh, this much needed 
uh, resources as well. And, um, you know, so today your administration made a significant uh, uh, impact across Indian country. And uh, I want to thank you for getting some of the money out today. Uh, I want to thank you also uh, because we need help now, Indian tribes, and can't wait for that litigation to end before additional payments are made to us from the fund. Uh, and if you can, please direct uh, Treasury to, to make these payments as soon as possible. Uh, and three, uh, you know, we need to spread the, the limited resources currently available as far as, as we can and to avoid allocating to a very few tribes and under allocating uh, to most others. And this means that you should include a limit or cap on the total funding any one tribe receives. And we need to have flexible guidance to allow us to use the funds we do to receive that we receive to keep our governments running, uh, Mr. President. And the current fund of $8 billion uh, is, is going to be woefully inadequate to meet our, our overall needs. And we really need to work, um, and we will work with Senator McSally and your administration uh, to take this to the next level. And, and I look forward to working with Senator McSally, uh, with the, uh, your, your Chief of Staff Meadows, uh, Congress, and your administration on the next relief bill, Mr. President. Thank you. Uh, to make sure that your investments in Indian country are going where they are needed the most, and in a way that shows that our governments uh, and our economic entities can be part of that recovery uh, that, that uh, we are talking about here. That will be critical as we come out of this crisis and rebuild our tribal, state, and national economy together with Indian country included, Mr. President. I always end my, uh, uh, my video messages to my community members. We're all in this together. Right. And to, con to continue to be Gila River strong. And I think that is how that we can continue to be Gila River strong <laughs> and, and to strengthen all tribal nations moving forward, Mr. President. That's good. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Stephen. I appreciate it. I have to say, uh, Myron Leiser and I have uh, dealt, and we've uh, our people have dealt together very closely, and the second lady, and a lot of progress has been made, and uh, we'll continue to make a lot of progress. I think you'll see that, and I think you're going to see it uh, not only here but in the future. Thank you very much, and I appreciate it very much. Thank Mr. you, Mr. thank you, Governor. Thank, thank you, you, Mr. President. And I don't have to thank you. You with the administration. <laughs> he has good genes, though. You know, he's got good genes, right? The Scalia genes. You don't get better than that, do you? They're good. They're good. Go ahead, Jim. Down the task force. Vice President Pence said there are discussions underway about winding down the task force. Is that a good idea during a pandemic? Well, I think we're looking at phase two, and we're looking at other phases. The country's starting to open up. The task force has done a phenomenal job. We have a, uh, a chart that I just showed somebody. We just got it this morning as I was getting off the plane. Uh, the uh, And Governor Ducey can explain it better than anybody. Uh, when we came in, uh, ventilators were a very, very big deal and very hard to produce. It's, I say, but it, it is largely true. The complexity is sort of like building a car. We opened up operations all over the country to build them. And uh, we there was hasn't been one person that needed a ventilator that didn't get it, which is amazing. And now we're helping other countries, and we're stockpiling in case some tragedy like this happens again. But this just came out on testing, because I think uh, we are at the point, or maybe uh, we'll soon be at the point, where I can say the exact same thing on testing. Uh, these numbers were just released. And this is the United States, the amount of testing, and our level of testing, and the quality of testing. This is just uh, from uh, Abbott Laboratories. This is, you know what this one is, Jim. It's a five-minute test. It's a great test. It's something people like, because you don't have to go through a laboratory. You don't have to send it in and send it back, and it takes a couple of days if they do a good job. So this is the testing, and the line here is the United States. We're over 7 million tests. Uh, Germany is uh, at two and a half. Italy is less than that. Uh, Japan is down here in South Korea, which we talk about. And again, I'm very friendly with South Korea with, and with the president of South Korea. And he calls to congratulate us on our great testing. South Korea is over here. One of the reasons we have more cases than any other country by far is because we test much more. So if you test, you can have more cases. If we tested down here, we wouldn't have very many cases. You know, they like to say we have more cases than anybody. But the fact is, uh, when you look at these numbers, uh, and this is the official count. Now, I can't tell you whether or not other countries are uh, giving us the straight deal. But I can say that I know one thing. It's only going to be on the high side, not going to be on the low side. So this is the other countries. These are the United States, and uh, it's incredible. Remember this, and I think it's important to say this, Jim. 
the quality of our test is also the best. I mean, it's acknowledged to be the best. So again, when we have cases, and we have more cases than anybody else, does anybody really believe that we have more cases than China? But they don't talk about numbers like this. Uh, and other countries. But we report everything. And I, I, just, I just want to say that we've done an incredible job on testing. With that being said, we have some additional, including antibody tests coming out, that will even blow these numbers away. But nobody's done the job we've done. Go ahead. But don't, but don't, you, need, don't you need to continue to meet with the task force to get this scientific Well, Well, yeah. Uh, we will have certain people, as an example, uh, we have hospitals that we built. We have medical centers that we built. We have people on the task force that focused on that. We have people on the task force that's focused exclusively on ventilators. Well, we have more ventilators now than anybody in the world, and we're helping France, as you know. We're helping France, Italy, Spain, Nigeria. We just we're giving, I think, 250 to Nigeria. Uh, we have many countries that we're helping. But the ventilator problem is solved, so you don't need that. We have now a different. It's sort of a combination of safety and reopening. So we'll have something in a different form. But the task force for what we've done, uh, I think everybody out there, when they're being very honest, I think the job we've done on testing will shortly be, and maybe even supersede, Doug, the job that we've done on ventilators, which people can't even believe. We had a call the other day with the governors. Mike Pence took the call, and they had, I believe, all 50 governors. And it was, they say, the best call we've had thus far. We're working closely with the governors. They have everything they need. And if they don't have it, and if they don't need it, or if they can't get it locally, then they know that we are stocked and we are ready and we can have. As an example, uh, we won't need this, but we were ready for weeks to have. We had 10,000 ventilators sitting in various locations with people by the ventilators ready to have those ventilators roll if they needed them in, as an example, Detroit or various other places over the country. So I think that as far as the task force, Mike Pence and the task force have done a great job, but we're now looking at a little bit of a different form, and that form is safety and opening, and we'll, uh, we'll have a different group probably set up for that. Are you saying mission accomplished? No, no, not at all. The mission accomplished is when it's over. When it's over, Jim, mission accomplished. No, Certainly I wouldn't say that at all. You need, sir. See, what? Certainly you will get the advice you need health-wise. What does that mean? Go ahead. Repeat your question. You say it. You'll get the advice that you need. Oh, yeah. We have great advice. We have great people. We have great people. Yeah, we have great doctors. We have great medical people, laboratory people. I have to say, I think tremendous progress is being made on uh, vaccines, which everybody should be very happy to hear. And therapeutically, I think we're making very good progress, too. We're making tremendous progress. Uh, we have the greatest doctors in the world, the greatest laboratories in the world. And I have to say, we're working with other nations. Uh, we're working with UK. We're working with Germany. We're working with uh, various other nations who are very advanced and doing a good job. I think therapeutically and also from the standpoint of laboratories, uh, we are uh, laboratories as it pertains to vaccines. We're doing very well. I'd love to see a therapeutic answer even before the vaccine, because we could take care of you know people that have a current, a current problem or dilemma. Uh, but uh, therapeutically and for the vaccines, a tremendous amount of progress. Uh, Oxford, Johnson and Johnson, uh, incredible places are doing, I think, a really good job, and they're very advanced. But we have to now see. We're going up to that very delicate final stage with a number. I think a number of other countries are also doing quite well, my people say. And just so you know, working very closely with other countries, and whoever gets it first, my hat's off to them. We're not looking for first, second, or third. We're looking to get a vaccine that works. And progress has been made. Mr. President, just to follow up on Jim's question, uh, with the doctors saying that there might be a recurrence of the coronavirus in the fall, why can you just explain why is now the time to wind down that task force? Well, because we can't keep our country closed for the next five years. You know, you could say there might be a recurrence, and there there might be. And the, you know, most doctors or some doctors say that it it will happen, and it'll be a flame, and we're going to put the flame out. We've learned a lot. You know, we've learned a lot about the coronavirus. Uh, we've learned a lot about this hidden enemy. It's a it's a dangerous enemy. It's a bad enemy. You see what it does, especially for people over a certain age. 
and people that have a, uh, an infirmity. If you have diabetes, if you have a bad heart, if you have a certain problem, it just, uh, Myron, it just goes after you. It's vicious. That's right. And we're saying that people that are over 60, 65, but over 60, we're even saying, uh, sort of, stay back for a while. We recommend you staying back for a while. Uh, at the same time, with young children and children, we'd like to see the schools open early next season and on time. Uh, it's incredible how the — it's very unique how the children aren't affected, but people that have problems and older people are uh, — can be very badly hurt, injured, or die from — from this problem. Mr. But President, would if, you — Hold would on. You, I just want to finish the follow-up. If — I understand you don't want to keep the country closed for five years, but don't you want your advisors to keep looking at this closely the way Oh, they are looking at it very closely. They are looking at it very closely. and. And I tell, I just said it today, I used the word for the first time, I think, in terms of what we're doing. I'm viewing our great citizens of this country, to a certain extent and to a large extent, as warriors. They're warriors. We can't keep our country closed. We have to open our country. Somebody said, oh, we could keep it for the next 18 months. We could keep it for the next two years. Doug Ducey's done an incredible job as the governor of Arizona. Uh, you, the people aren't going to accept it. They won't accept it, and they shouldn't accept it. We have a great country. <clears throat> we can't keep it closed. I mean, I've had doctors say, well, why don't we close it for a couple of years? <laughs> this is the United States of America. I created, with a lot of other very talented people and the people of our country, the greatest economy in the history of, of the world, the greatest that we've ever had the greatest employment numbers, the best numbers we've ever had, the best stock markets. I think we had 144 days of record stock markets. And then one day they said, we have to close our country. Well, now it's time to open it up. And you know what? The people of our country are warriors, and I'm looking at it. I'm not saying anything is perfect. And yes, will some people be affected? Yes. Will some people be affected badly? Yes. But we have to get our country open, and we have to get it open soon. Uh, maybe I could ask, Doug, if you'd like to address that point. Well, I just want to say, uh, in, in Arizona, we have put public health first. Uh, we have looked at the numbers that your medical experts put forward in the Opening Up America Again plan uh, in terms of uh, our, our symptoms, uh, our cases, our hospital capacity, our ability to, to surge on our testing. And we're going to continue to put public health first, but we know so much more today than we did six or eight weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So we believe that we want to protect our most vulnerable. Those are, are the folks that are of a certain age with the underlying health condition. Uh, but the first objective was that the largest places were shut down. Major League Baseball made the decision to, to shut down spring training. Those are some of the best weeks of the year in the state of Arizona. Major League Baseball has delayed opening day. Uh, schools are not in session. So these large gathering places have dispersed. We've been able to address the fact that we have hospital capacity, ICU capacity, and ventilator capacity if it's necessary. Uh, today, it doesn't look as it will be. So we have our arms around the public health emergency in Arizona, and the president, the vice president, and the, the medical experts, along with the, the cabinet secretaries, have given the latitude to governors to make decisions on what's the, in the best public health interest of their state. Arizona is, is not New York State. It wasn't hit first. It wasn't hit that hard. We've learned a lot from what those states have gone through, and we're going to apply it to protect our citizens. Mr. President, do you, do you still want the advice of Dr. Fauci and Dr. Burks? Will they still be involved even once the task force? Oh, sure. Yeah, they will be, and, and so will other doctors, and so will other experts in the field. Uh, but we've learned a lot. As Doug said, we've learned a lot. Uh, it's uh, — you're going to probably have — uh, fires here, Doug, you'll put them out. You're going to put them out, and uh, you'll put them out fast. So, uh, yeah, we, we're bringing our country back, and I think what is going to happen, uh, just said it a little while ago, you're going to have a third quarter where you're going to have transition. You'll have a big, beautiful, hopefully a very good transition, a very successful transition back into the real world. And then you're going to have a fourth quarter that I think is going to do very well. And then I think next year, I think we're going to have one of the best years we've ever had, because we have stimulus and we have a pent-up demand like I have never seen before. 
You know, today's a very interesting day because it's my first day out, and Doug reminded me of something. I didn't do it for that reason, but you said this is the first place you stopped when you ran, when I ran for something that turned out to be a very successful run. And we had tremendous crowds. You remember at the convention center in Phoenix, and it was uh, pretty incredible. And I, I didn't do it for that reason, interestingly, but here we are. And uh, it was great that you uh, remind us of that fact. But look, we're going to uh, have a very interesting transition period into the fourth quarter. I think your fourth quarter is going to be very good, and I think next year is going to be one of the best years economically we've ever had. With that said, for those people that have lost somebody, for the people that have lost a loved one, even a close friend, uh, you know, no, nothing can ever happen that's going to replace that. You know, you, I don't care what kind of a year you have from an economic standpoint, nobody's ever going to replace that. But I think from an economic standpoint, purely an economic standpoint, I think next year is potentially going to be one of the best years we've had. There's tremendous stimulus out there, and people want to get out. They want to go, and they want to go to town. This country was, was founded on certain principles, and those principles are at work like you've never seen before. So I want to thank you all very much. Thank you. And we'll see you perhaps at the next stop. Thank you. Thank you, Press. There's a vaccine. Thank you, Press. Coronavirus vaccine. Yeah, what about it, Jim? If there's a coronavirus vaccine, will you get it? Will you take it? Will I take it? If they would like me to, I'd go the first one or I'd go the last one. I don't want to waste it. Hmm. But he's just saying, if there's a vaccine, would you take it? And he might like it that it didn't work too well, okay? But that's okay. I would absolutely, Jim, if there's a vaccine and if they wanted me to be first on line, I'd be first on line or I'd be last on line or I wouldn't take it at all, whatever's best for the country. Okay? okay. Thank you.